Welcome, welcome, fellas, to the Captain Saver Bro Show, Episode 7, Trigger Warning. Today, we're going to talk about sexual assault. That's right. Since ain't nobody else going to do it, I guess King Dredd's going to have to do it. But first, before we get into that, this show is available via Spotify, Apple Music, Google Podcasts, etc. YouTube, the whole nine. And also, this episode is brought to you by UltimateLadiesMan.com. Fellas, April 4th. Enrollment will be open for the Ultimate Ladies Man Seminar. You can go get on the wait list right now at ultimateladiesman.com. You are not going to want to miss this. This is going to be huge. You get three courses, Attraction 101, How to Make a Woman Fall in Love with You, and the Ultimate Ladies Man Dating Guide that teaches you how to date from A to Z, how to approach all the way up into sexual escalation. Go get on the wait list right now, ultimateladiesman.com. You're going to also get... Um, monthly Zoom, private Zoom meetings with me when you purchase that pack, purchase that package, and you get five intense training webinars that teaches you everything about the game from some of the best coaches in the game. Zoom webinars, five of them, uh, live on via Zoom. So make sure you go get on the wait list right now, and you're gonna also get access to the private players club, the private Telegram chat with me and other players like yourself. So make sure you go get on the wait list right now, ultimateladiesman.com, April 4th through April 8th. The enrollment will be only, uh, the enrollment, excuse me, the enrollment will be open and you'll have, you can purchase it between this window from uh, April 4th and then uh, enrollment closes on April 8th. So go get on the wait list right now. Also, fellas, join the Patreon at patreon.com slash King Dreism. You got the $5 tier where you'll get the behind the scenes shit. You'll get the exclusive videos. You'll get the high two videos. And then we have the $100 tier where we'll be giving you private Zoom meetings twice a month. So go get on the $100 tier right now. And if you purchase the Ultimate Ladies Man, um, if you purchase the Ultimate Ladies Man seminar or summit, then you'll be able to get access to this as well. So that's at patreon.com slash King Dreism. Also follow me on social media, all social media at King Dreism.com. That's IG, that's TikTok, that's Twitter. But let's get straight into this. This one's going to be serious. I'm going to try not to keep you here all day, but this one is going to be serious. I'm not going, we're not going to do no celebrity gossip. We're not going to do none of that. We're going to jump straight into this because this is a serious issue. This is a serious issue. Um, that men don't tackle, and if they do tackle it, it's based on some, uh, you know, their false allegations and all of that. But I'm going to we going we going to dig into it the way that we should dig into it. Let's get it. So I rolled over out of my bed at 2 a.m. and decided to check my emails about four or five days ago, and I got an email that disturbed me that prompted the the, the theme of this show, and I'm gonna get straight into reading the email. Trigger warning. He says, hey, brother, love watching and listening to the Captain Saver Bro show. It's the reason I'm writing this to you now. I have a stupid but serious problem I'm dealing with in my life and want to know what to do about this situation. This story is long, but I'll explain it to you because this is fucking with me mentally. I'm 24 years old and single. I'm working full time, full time and studying part time. I live in Australia. I was in a relationship with a girl who I work with for about a year and a half now, and we have been broken up for two years since March 2020. She, is, she was 19 at the time, and I was 22. We treated each other with respect the majority of the time and had a good time together for about 90% of the time we spent in the relationship, or at least I felt this way, because she never complained or said anything to me until recently. There was one time in the relationship where I said stupid and hurtful things to her, I called her boring and a girl with no personality, and this made her crowd and shout back the same to me. Then few times here and there throughout the relationship, I made jokes about her character calling her childish and dumb to make playful banter and make her laugh. A few times I had gotten drunk and text her what I felt about her, that I thought she had amazing potential, but she was just dumb and clumsy and had not gotten there yet. I text her that I would fuck her, I text her that I would fuck her all the time. I text her that I would fuck her all the t- all the. T- I text her that I would fuck her all the time since she told me she liked sex as a form of affection and she loved affection. I apologized immediately for making her cry. 
The next time I saw her and brought her flowers and chocolates and she forgave me and we moved forward and uh, I never said it again. I realized after listening to you that I was dating her potential and not her and that I was trying to change her and help her with things she struggled with like low self-esteem and stuff because I thought that's what I had to, I thought that's what I had to do to be a good boyfriend. I realize now that it doesn't that it does not do anything but sabotage a good relationship. I think I came off as abusive somehow. You think I think I came off as abusive somehow. I was not. I was not. Oh, yes, you were. We'll get into that. But no way was I being a good man. I should have not been with this girl in the first place, but I learned the hard way. She initiated the breakup, and I agreed because I felt there was a problem between us, but wasn't really sure what what at the time. We broke up the night she came over and had sex before she left. So we broke up that night and she came over and we had sex and she left and it was final. I became all emotional after a week of breaking up and sent her those. I want to share my feelings with you for the last time, kind of text, hoping she would come and give me some closure. Obviously it didn't work. And I realized now that some stupid shit I shouldn't have said. She had gotten into a relationship with another guy who was waiting around for her in less than a month. Nah, probably a fucking week, but that's not the point. When I found that out, I blocked her and everything, and I decided I was going to ignore her and not pay her any fucking attention unless I absolutely needed to. We worked at the same job together, so this was tricky, but I did manage to do it. I ignored her while she would look at me. I would walk away. I would walk the other way when I knew she was in front. I walked past her without saying anything and all of that childish shit that I thought I should do. One night when I walked past her on my night shift and ignore her, I got a message from her the next night accusing me of raping her. So he ignored her one night and he got a message. He got a message the next night accusing him of raping her. She points out different occasions when we had sex while together She says that now she is traumatized and says that I coerced her into having sex and I sexually assaulted her. She also complains about all of the other things I mentioned earlier saying, um, uh, earlier saying and saying other things she thinks I did wrong. She sends me this message on Instagram three months ago after breaking up and I was fucking shocked. I sent her an apology message thinking that this might be what she needs to hear. This man writes crazy. I sent her an apology message message thinking that this might be what she wants or needed to hear, saying I saying ways I should have been a better man in the relationship. So he sent her an apology message saying he's sorry and he should have been a better man because I truly felt guilty for making her cry and hurting her feelings. Nothing happened for about two months, no response or anything, but this got worse, right? get juicy baby let's get juicy next time i saw her when we were swapping over ships shifts i was starting and she was finishing so she had to pass on an important info to me about things that i needed to be aware of around the workplace when she finished up she did and i had everything i needed but the whole time she was talking i did not look her in her eyes nor did i talk in full sentences i just responded with one words and started my job I didn't say bye to her. She left and I continued on happily. The next day I found out she had reported me to the HR team for sexually assaulting her at work. She detailed the whole story to them and we both both were interviewed separately. It was true that we had sex at work, but not but not once, but a lot of times. We were both fine with it. They asked me if it was consensual and I said yes, but I said yes because it was. But afterwards, I realized I would have to resign since I had broken the code of conduct and they would terminate me. I didn't want that on my record, so I resigned and thanked them for employing me. She had to resign as well. I lost my job. She did as well. About three months after this, now a year after being broken up, two police detectives showed up to my house investigating a sexual assault allegation made against made by her against me. She had reported this to the police and made a statement against me. I spoke to a lawyer who advised me not to say anything and invoke my right to silence. 
since anything I say will be used against me. I was fucking shocked and scared, bro. To be honest with you, I actually started believing that I was guilty. If it got to this stage, I must have done something, right? Long story short, nine months after this, on my birthday, she uploaded an entire story. Pay attention now. To, on his birthday, she uploaded an entire story on Facebook where she says everything that happened to her. I'll show this to you since it's public anyway. She makes me out to be an emotional abuser, a rapist, and a monster of some kind. You are an emotional abuser, but we'll get into that. I have proof and text from her that contradicts her words. There has been heaps of instances where we had sex after the quote-unquote rapes she is talking about. She sent me nudes and all of that stuff. Like, why is all of this stuff coming from her now? Like, what does she fucking want? A part of me is saying that, saying this is not even about sex, it's something else. Was it ignoring her damaging, was ignoring her damaging her ego or something? Majority of my friends saw this and confronted me about it, and I got scared and told them I thought I did wrong. I acted like a coward and broke down in front of them. They weren't rude, but I felt the discussion I had with them did not go about my problem properly. I was being, I was just being defensive and venting out my frustrations. They were just silent and listening. I felt my mates all believed her instantly and said they were not going to meet up with me again. We almost going to come into the end. I know this is long, right? Uh, meet up with me again. They are all out of my life now. So his homeboys cut him off behind this. And to be honest, I think my actions are what led to this. Not anything to do with her story. Not to say I still don't have friends I trust because I do. There are a few who are still on great terms with me. I'm going, I'm still going about my life positively. Like I'm working and studying a degree. I'm working out and getting in better shape. I have hobbies I love doing. I want to take my life in the right direction so I can be a valuable and great man and someone that can re- trust and re- people can trust and rely on. I have a I admit I have made mistakes and realized that I'm paying for them. I have not talked to her since the day we were swapping over, and I'm not planning to either. Brother, now that you have an idea, I wanted to ask, what do you, what do you think I did wrong? I keep torturing myself with my thoughts and how I can change this. How do I go about talking to people that question me about this? Do you think I should do something, like say something about this online or approach her? How do I know who my friends are and how do I select them in the future? How do I avoid this type of situation with all girls in the future? I have no clear clue what to do here. I'm scared. I'm scared of being convicted of a criminal, a criminal, a crime and being a criminal and this ruining my life. I need some help with this, bro. Thanks. Now I'm going to say this. This is not legal advice. I'm not a lawyer. I've never been in a situation like that, so I can't tell you what to do. I don't want to tell you to do something, and you get yourself in trouble. What I can say, me personally, I would defend myself. Fuck what a lawyer's talking about. I would defend myself. I can bitch you lying. You lying out your teeth. That's just me. I be feeling like celebs to do that. But who am I? What do I know? So this, that's, I can't give you legal advice, bro. This is a serious situation. But what I can say is, who, like, why do you feel, and guys like it this, why do you feel the need to tear people down, bro? Like, you you started this, this, this message off by saying, you know, you was right about what I, what I say about dating potential and shit, and you tried to take it in that direction. But this ain't got nothing to do with you dating a person's potential. Of course I say don't date a woman's potential, but you don't have to build, you don't have to tear people down. You calling the girl boring and to call a person boring is one thing, but you telling the girl you don't got no personality, you dumb, you texting her and shit. Cause you said that you was just playing at first, right? Well, you said you said that and she cried, but then you would play and call her, you know, she too dumb and, and saying all this shit. Like, what do you think that this is doing to a person when you tell them this, bro? That's called abuse. That's emotionally abusing somebody. You don't want her to be calling you dumb or stupid or nothing. You shouldn't have to abuse anybody to get your way. You shouldn't have to abuse no woman, no man, no nothing. Don't nobody want to be talked to like that. I'm not going to let no bitch talk to me like that. I advise you not to let women talk to you like that. But I also don't teach you to talk to people like that, bro. You don't make like that lets me know how you feel about yourself as a person, as a human being, the fact that you have to talk to people like that. 
You don't call people stupid and you dumb and, you know, you can't get it together and I would be with you, but, and, and all of this old weird shit, bro. You did, That's clown shit. You don't have to do that. And whenever you see somebody doing that, that, that tells you how small they feel on the inside. You don't have to tear people down. That's abuse. And this is probably why you got what you got. You understand what I'm saying? Now, she, I asked him because we went on, we we exchanged about 20 messages back and forth. Like we messaged each other through email about 20 times. And I was trying to find out different details and shit so I could make, you know, figure out how to present this to you guys in, in, in the best way. What he did was he sent me her, he sent me what she put on Facebook, and I asked him to send me her breakup text. So I'm going to read both of those, the breakup text. Now, from what I know and from what I see, I don't know who to, I don't know, I can't say that she's falsely, she's falsely accusing him. I'm not going to get on here and say that because I don't fucking know. I can't say that he did do it. I don't know. I'm not going to get on here and say, well, you did this because of this. I'm not going to. I just want to put this situation out here for you guys so you can understand what not to fucking do. I want you guys to understand something. Women can't beat you physically. And I get into this in a second once I break the game down. But women can't beat you physically. And if they feel like they have to beat you, they'll get you another way. Go check out my the first episode of this podcast called The Evil Nature of Women. And it breaks this down. Perfectly. This is a prime example. And again, allegedly he assaulted this girl. She say he did. He say he didn't. I don't know. This podcast ain't about that. See, most guys will get on here and be like, oh, well, it's false allegation. I'm not doing that. I want you guys to see this from a different angle and a different perspective. But what I also want you guys to do is take your shoes off and put another person's shoes on and look at this from a 360 spectrum. You understand what I'm saying? But, bro, you out of your mind, bro. If you think you're going to basically put, call people stupid and you dumb and, you know, what else you said? Born with no personality, uh, you childish and you dumb and you think that this is playful. How do you, you said that you think that this is going to make her laugh. This is playful. How you, who is going to laugh at somebody putting them down? I don't even play like that. Me personally, I don't play with my homeboys like that. Now, if you want to roast about some shit, you know, if you you roast me, I'll roast you now. But I don't play those games of, uh, of, of, of tearing people down. I don't let guys play with me like that, and I don't let women play with me like that. Oh, you fat or you broke or saying hurtful mean shit. Oh, I'm just playing. I don't do that. I'm playing shit. I don't play like that. And I don't play like that with other people. And you shouldn't either. Guys say, oh, well, men can handle this locker room shit. I never played like that. I hear dudes talk calling their homeboys. Oh, you just acting like such a bitch. Oh, you this or you that. Oh, it's just bro talk. It ain't no bro talk with me. I don't play like that. We ain't, you're not going to play disrespectful. You're not going to play tearing me down. Don't play like that. King Dre don't play like that for in real life. And, and anybody know you, anybody that know me knows that I don't, I don't play like that. You see what I'm saying? Now, we can roast. I can roast your shoes or whatever. If you want to roast, I could take it there with you. But it's lighthearted. It's not you stupid. Uh, what else he said? You stupid. You too dumb. Um, you know, I thought you had. I, he told a girl. He would tell her. He would text her this. Now, this is after he said. After he said what he said to her and apologized. So he's saying he would text her stuff like this all the time. You have put you have potential, but you too dumb to reach your potential. Like how the fuck? Like what do you expect, bro? You see what I'm saying? Like, why do you win? Like, what part of the game is that? What part of the game is this that you think that this is how you talk to people? Let alone a, a woman. Ain't nothing, all that, this is what I'm saying, all that dumbass dread game and stupid shit y'all learn. This is what happens. You think somebody gonna let you get away with, with, with tearing them down and making them feel a certain type of way? Bro, as a human being, a, just a human, fuck being a woman, a human being, don't nobody wanna be talked to like that and be put down, especially a weak, frail woman who's looking to you to protect her, bro. You see what I'm, you see what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying he did it. I'm not saying she lying. But what I can say with reading this, I ain't surprised this happened to you. Because as the evil nature of women, like I said, 
They can't beat you physically. They'll get you back another way. And y'all think y'all finna be running this dread game and putting your girls down and making them feel insecure and all of that shit. And you think they ain't going to get you back? You crazy. Now, all of them ain't get going to get you back by putting sexual assault cases on you. But they'll fuck your friend. They'll fuck the guy you jealous of. They'll fucking lie and say you hit them and get you locked up. They'll steal your money. They'll get you. They going to get you back, bro. Go check out the evil nature of women. This shit ain't no game. Stop playing with people like that. Don't play. Don't deal. My guys, fellas, you don't have to tear people down to shine, bro. You don't have to tear people down to build them up. This ain't the fucking military. We talking about people who's humans, bro. This is not how you kick your game at all. This is not how you kick your game at all. I'm disappointed to even say that you watch me and you've been a follower of mine. Because if you know me, you know you don't kick your game like this. You see what I'm saying? And then you wondering why she broke up with you. I thought, you so, you so, something is wrong with you. You so out of your fucking head, right? You so out of your head that you really believe that by you doing and saying all of this shit, you really think that this is playful and funny and shit, right? And then you really believe that you can do treat a person like this and that everything is good 90% of the time. How are you abusing them, bro? Like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all sometimes, bro? I got it. Man. Bro. Y'all got to get it together, bro. This ain't game. Ain't no part of the game. Like I said... A lot of these coaches tell y'all this dumb ass shit, make a girlfriend insecure, this is how you control them, or whatever your motives was. That ain't the move. That ain't the move, bro. And and pretty much all of this shit you wrote was, most of it was fluff, because you telling me about she fucking with some other, other guy uh, maybe a week later. Who I, she, I wouldn't be surprised if she was cheating on you. You see what I'm saying? But I don't want to, because I'm, I'm starting to go off on a whole rant what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read what she posted on Facebook, which is public information, right? This is public. She posted this on Facebook about the experiences that happened to her. And I'm also going to read her breakup letter to him because to me, in my opinion, things are kind of wishy-washy, right? From what she say and shit like this, but this ain't even to, She's falsely accusing him. I don't know. The guy seems kind of goofy to me, bro. Like to where he don't know something, something, certain things that he doing could be considered assault. I don't even think that he realized this just based on how clue. Like if, if this guy is saying, I call my girl stupid, dumb, and she got potential, but she too dumb to reach it. But he would think 190% of the time that things are okay. If he don't know that, then I don't, It'll make sense. I, you, we Let's get into her. What I'm going to do again, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to read because I don't want to start ranting again. I'm going to read what she posted on Facebook. In 2022, there's one haunting question that plagues every single man. How do I make her submit to me? The answer is simple, but most are afraid to learn the truth. Mind games, mixed signals, pullaways. I need space. Let's take a break. It will continue on and on and on, slowly consuming you from the inside out. That's why I've spent years and years making this for you. It kills the nice guy energy. It removes the neediness. It eliminates the beta male tendencies. It unleashes a part of you that's been hidden, maybe even your entire life. In fact, when you have this game at this level, you become what all women desire. You become who they crave. You'll be noticed as the guy who gets it, the one girls adore, the man she will break all of the rules for. You will become the ultimate ladies' man. These secrets in your hand are an easy shortcut to what you want. Nothing is watered down or politically correct. What's revealed may even make you a little uncomfortable. So I have one important question that can shape the rest of your life. Do you have the courage to become the ultimate ladies man. Now, this is what she uploaded on Facebook. Trigger warning, S sexual and emotional abuse. This is a trigger warning, fellas and ladies, if you're watching it. You, you watching or listening. <clears throat> 
I am a victim of both emotional and sexual abuse. This is my story, and I would like to share this with you. For my protection, if you recognize the individual I am writing about, please do not expose him. For the reason I am posting my story is the fact that I attempted to take my case to court, but due to lack of CCTV footage, witnesses, and text messages, as I deleted them after separating myself from this person. I was a, I was unable to, she talking about the text messages, I was unable able to proceed with charging this individual with rape as the lawyers felt that this was an unwinnable case, making it unlawful to put a name on this individual. That being said, this life experience has been the most tra- traumatic and life-changing for me, and I would still like to acknowledge all that I've been through despite this. To begin, in my almost two-year relationship with this person, my experience with him has always been emotionally abusive. I was consistently ridiculed, told that I lack personality, I am boring, lazy, labeled childish. He hated the fact that I had no hobbies or dream job, even though at my age I had landed myself a decent job. He consistently made me feel so small, complained when I didn't speak enough. When I didn't exaggerate the amount of fun I was having with him, <clears throat> when I didn't um, when I didn't exaggerate the amount of fun I was having when with him, he would act, act he would exaggerate his disappointment with me. So if she didn't overly express how much fun she was having, because it seems like neediness, right? He would be disappointed because she wasn't expressing to him, or she what he wasn't valid. She wasn't validating to him that you know she was having fun so he would oh, he would exaggerate his frustration all his belittlement and ridicule made me exaggerate every feeling i felt when i was with him to make him happy this also meant pay attention to this this also meant that i hypersexualized myself in order to simply make him feel satisfied and feel valued as a person in his life changing my style of clothing and my behavior my first sexual sexual assault happened on a night shift at work. I had finished up closing the, uh, the business and the rest of the team had left the office to the break room. I noticed he hanged back and hinted me to stay, so I did. We were all alone in the office together with no CCTV and witnesses for what was about to turn my world upside down. He began, touch, he be, he began being touchy and flirty with me. I didn't know at this instant he wa- instance he wanted sex. I thought he was happy to be working the same night shift with me as it was rare. He made it known to me that he wanted sex. I immediately declined, stating that it was wrong as we were on shift and I wasn't comfortable with it. He made more advances. I said no. He moved me pushing me face to He moved me pushing me face first into the door. He used his large body weight to hold me there. I couldn't get him off of me. He was too heavy. I told him to stop, that I was scared, and he replied with, it's okay. Moving his hand to my belt, which is ridiculously easy to undo. By the way, he undid it. My work pants dropped to my knees. I bent down to pull them back up. Knowingly, I put him off balance. But me being the stupid idiot that I am, I didn't move from that spot, but instead focused on redoing the belt. He was able to hold me again, hold me down again, face squished into the doorway, undid my belt the second time, pants dropped. That's when I finally became quiet and said my last no. He eventually decided that he needs to watch the CCTV in case my workers decided to uh in case my co-workers decided to return. He moved me to the to the computer monitors, bent me over the table and finished himself looking up and seeing the outside on the screen. This rape didn't last long, but it has internally devastated me and caused me so much pain. But at this time, for some dumb reason, I didn't comprehend this as rape. Hmm. But instead, this is what someone in his role in my life is able to do because he loves me. Months rolled by, unreported she white writes weird but this is put this is on facebook by the way she put this on facebook my second rape occurred at such and such zoo in such and such town i ain't gonna say the names this time i was pressured into saying yes 
She said, I was pressured into saying yes. Would you believe at this time they had not installed security cameras? This was something I had come to learn this year. Most of the, the place experience was fun. He labeled me childish only once when he instructed me to head over to the kids area as a joke. So he told her, go over there to the kids area. You a child. We eventually enter a dark aquarium room. Again, he got touchy and flirty. <laughs> I damn near said what it was at. This time he, he held my back against the wall. I felt his erection push in, onto my stomach. I immediately tell him no, and this is not the place. We argue for a solid five minutes. For a solid five minutes, he told me there are no cameras and nobody here. He even got out of his he even got out his phone with flash on to scan the ceiling, illustrating so. At one point, I began walking toward the aquarium exit when he increased his arguing. My dumb ass stopped walking away and continued with my argument until he until he made me feel pressured. So they arguing about he trying to bone. And they are, she telling him no, and they arguing about it, according to her, allegedly, right? Um, until he made me feel pressured. To make it stop, I changed my answer to an okay. So in order for her to get him to stop arguing, she said okay, according to her. He sat down on his seat, unzipped his pants, and I sat on top. This lasted two seconds before he got frustrated because I was not into it for being scared. So she wasn't into it because she was scared. He told me to get off, and the rest of the day was awkward with him because of this. I felt distressed inside as due to the feeling of helplessness. We did not speak of this situation again, and to cope, I used humor posting on Instagram. Can't wait for when the bull shark arrives, Weird, as that's where I looked when delivering him what he pressured me to. I don't understand that. My final uh, my final rape occurred on the night I went to tell him I no longer wanted a relationship with him. I had previously texted him a long paragraph explaining this to him, but he begged me to come do this in person. He offered this, he offered to this somewhere public or at his house. At the time I felt the easiest option would be to do it at his house as he he is so small as he wouldn't have to drive far. Our relationship consisted of me driving an hour every time to hang out with him as he complained about the distance. I don't know why it made sense to me at the time to just meet at his place. Uh, let's see, to just meet at his place. Where am I? This is so small. Okay, when I got there, we sat on the couch. I began telling him all the reasons we didn't work out. This, for some reason, turns him on, and he attempted to kiss me two times. Both times, I pushed him away and stating, I'm here to break up with you because you need me to do this in person. The third time, I didn't push away. I just let it happen. So he came on to her twice, and she pushed him away twice, so she tried to stop it nice. And the, and the, sec the last time, she said she just let it happen. I'm, this is what she said. I was with this man for a year and a half, and I just couldn't keep myself fighting anymore. After he finished, he instructed me to take a shower. We made awkward eye contact whilst I stood there numb. He then, he then instructed me he wanted to delete both our nudes, and he asked for my, it gets small, I can't read this part. This was my highest mistake it, yeah, it gets weird. He, this is kind of where it stops. Like he, that's a cutoff, and then he sends me to he sends me another picture that says, um, "If you're reading this, quote unquote, individual, with my whole being, I hate you, and I hope one day karma catches up and you experience every cruel thing that I experience, both physical and emotional, and that you are aware, you fully deserve every inch of it." I also hope you never find love. And if somehow you manage to lock down a girl again, that she sees the real you and hates you, hates you too. I hope you die alone. Also, you'll never get famous. People who see you on the street won't say, oh, look, that's so-and-so. So stop dreaming and go live your mediocre rapist life. Obviously, he wants to be famous. I wish I laughed in your face when you first told me. 
So she says, I wish I would have laughed in your face when you first told me you wanted to be famous. Um, delete your Instagram account, man, by choice. Nobody will listen to a boy like you on how to help men fulfill their own potential. Now, once he sends me, you know, he sent me both of those and I read them. It's like it don't, the shit don't really make sense. Like somebody, the story ain't adding up on, on her part or his part. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, you know what? Send me the breakup text. So he sent me the breakup text that, you know, when he was saying that she, they both of them confirmed that she broke up with him over text and she came over one last time. So I'm going to read you the breakup text and then we're going to get into the game, right? She says, hey, blank, I spent the last few days thinking over everything and I'm sure you have too. I want you to know this whole time I've been in this relationship, I've looked up to you and have admired you. I would have never guessed that I would end up in a relationship with someone as great as you. But the issue is, I've never looked at us the same level. I've always held you higher than me, and because we jumped straight into the relationship, skipping the friend part, we never had the proper chance to understand each other's differences and in social interactions and in values in life. We learned that after becoming committed. I am sure that when you first learned how awkward, quiet, and shy I was, you were taken aback and you wanted to see you were taken aback and wanted to see if you could change that which ended up happening. I learned that you were extremely you were I learned that you were extremely confident, fame loving and an over overachieving individual. And now, and knowing how I was, I was unsure if I could keep up with you and satisfy what you were hoping to get in a girlfriend. I think I'm going to break this down maybe in another show about how um, sometimes women can feel, this is a sidebar, sometimes women can feel like if you make them feel small, how it's too much to be with you. You see what I'm saying? I think I'm going to break that down in a, in a, in a um, on another show. But um, let's just say, uh, before we start, I never had a standard of what a boyfriend should be like. I just assumed he'd be my best friend and be there for me. We skipped the friend part, but definitely in this relationship, you've always had my back and I had yours. I know you care for me and wanted me happy, and I wanted the same and much more for you. I don't know if I've told you. But every, but very earlier on in the relationship, when I realized you had a high standard for girlfriends, way before you started to insult me, I felt like maybe I wasn't the right fit for you. I felt like you were for me, but in my head at the time, I started doubt, doubting me meeting your standards. And when our arguments took off, so did your doubt of me. Remember, we both explained how we give trust to people that I like to give it all straight away and hope that individual can keep it all. And when negative happens, it gets bent a little, especially when it gets bent over and over and over again. And because I already gave it all, even when someone's trying to gain it all back, I really need proof and commitment that whatever was wrong had changed. I know you said that in the last two months you've changed and accepted who I am as a person, but I've only seen you outside of work for a couple times, which isn't enough to let me know things have changed. Even on Valentine's Day, I had doubts. And at the end of the date, I asked if I was too quiet for you that day. And even though you said it was fine, I wasn't sure if I believed you. I care for you a lot, blank. And I know I hurt you when I came to your house. I could see it in your face that you were holding back emotions to talk to me properly. I wonder what she's talking about. I wonder what she's talking about. She says she hurt him, right? Um, and I could see it in your face, and you were holding back the emotions to talk to me properly. And it hurts me to know what happened with you after I walked from your house. After I walked from your house, whilst being uh, blank, whilst being in a relationship and being through all that we've gone through, I haven't been able to get over the stuff that has been said and the frustration I've seen in your face, and how I haven't felt confident. And you ha haven't ha how I haven't felt confident that you'd be happy, happy settling down with me. And the longer this went on, the more sadder and uh, convinced that I got. And it has changed the way I behave in our relationship. I became bitter whenever you asked me what I was doing. Pay attention to this, fellas. I became bitter whenever you asked what I was doing because I felt like 
if I if the answer wasn't good enough, you'd be disappointed that I wasn't using my time productively. Let me stop. So remember, he's calling her. This is this is going to be good for another show. But I want to point something out that she's saying right here, because this is some excellent t- to learn from. So remember how he's always calling her lazy. You ain't got no potential, but you dumb, you lazy, you stupid. So every time that he would act, this is what you do to people when you break them down. Every time that he would ask her, what are you doing? She felt a, she felt a certain type of way because she knew that whatever she felt like, whatever the answer was, it wouldn't be good enough for him. And it would make him feel a certain type of way. So every time he would ask her that, it would annoy her and make her become bitter at him. You guys have to be, this game get deep, bro. When you're dealing with women and dealing with people in general, general, it gets deep, especially from a leadership position. And this ain't it just ain't your, your girlfriends or whatever, but when you're in a leadership position, you got to be careful of who's up, who you, you know, how you treat the people who's following you, your girlfriend included. This is just goes to show you little things like that matter, right? But she say, if I felt like the answer wasn't good enough, you'd be disappointed that I wasn't using my time productive. And you've also know how I've become less affectionate, that I have been kissing you and touching you less. At the start, I hadn't noticed, and I was just acting on how I felt at the time. And I'm thinking the more convinced of how boring I was and how unsatisfied you were, I began to start touching you back and less, right? So he telling her, oh, you boring, you ain't satisfying me and shit. And so she started to feel like, well, why the fuck even try? Remember what I told y'all about the dude the last time was telling this girl, uh, his girl was sending him pictures because she wanted a response. So he started to get worried when she stopped sending him pictures and stopped sending him little cute shit throughout the end of the day because he's so scared to validate her. It's kind of the same situation. This this is the same kind of, this, it's the same type of deal, right? But, you know, she stopped trying to satisfy him because he telling her so much that you ain't satisfying me. You boring and shit. So she just stopped. So now he probably like, well, what the fuck going on? You know, you ain't like you used to be. Well, duh. It was the point, right? So um, my feelings of this relationship also became noticeable whenever I got drunk. I'd always get sad and cry about how boring I was, and I think I tried to drunk test you. It lasts, but my friends saw what I was doing and took my phone. I managed to send one text, but autocorrect changed it into something like, I'm so fucking boring or something. Even though you've seen me sometimes, I sometimes be sad about this. She writes weird. Even though, and even though you've seen me sometimes be sad about this, I've also have been thinking about it, worrying on my own because I don't want to worry you. And I was hoping I couldn't fig, I could figure it out on my own. So she say, I know you see me sad about it, but I don't want to put, I don't want to put it on you, right? Um, but it's just snowballing. I agree with you on how skipping the friendship friendship part of our relationship have, has negatively affected it. I feel the same way as you. I've never considered you a friend or a best friend, just a boyfriend. I was also hoping for it to be both when we started. I would like to try for it now, but I understand if I understand if that would be too difficult for you, and it might be as well for me. For me, after realizing. And living this, if I think would be best for me to take some time alone. So she's she asking for a break. Um, she, she breaking up with him right here. If I take some time alone, it hasn't gotten any better with me trying to figure it out in the relationship. And I've been so sad and unhappy with myself over everything. You don't have to reply to this or take up this offer of being friends. I know I've hurt you Saturday, and I don't want to hurt you ever again. I've had... Learned a lot through being in this relationship. I've seen and done new things and learned new ways to enjoy myself. That And there is so much more to the world. You've shown me a great deal of love and kindness, and I'll always be thankful of that. And I'm grateful it was you who gave me the new experiences. Now, I just want to let you guys understand something. She sent this before the Facebook shit that I read. So I read the Facebook shit first, but this message came before the Facebook shit. And I'm, I'm very curious. I want to know what she did to hurt him. Cause that throws a whole 
spin on things for me, right? And I forgot to ask him that. But I will say this. Whether he assaulted her, who knows, bro? But you are abusive, dude. You're an abusive man. And you need to go get help. You need to go get fixed, bro. You can't treat people like that. That ain't it. That ain't the move. You understand what I'm saying? And this is... You have to understand where this hate for you comes from. Because whether you did whether you did this to her or not, right? The assault part. It's clear that you did, you know, say some nasty shit. This hard people get grow resentful, and that resent turns to hate. The girl says she wanna see you die alone, bro. She don't want you to be famous. She hope you she should have laughed at you. This girl has this has been brewing and it's turned to hate. This girl hates your fucking guts. So in in it seems like it's the abuse part. I don't know about the 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 the, the, the sexual assault and shit, but just the way you put a person down and you get them to the point to where every time you say something to them, they scared to respond to you, bro. This has an, the way you treat people has an effect on them, and that's gonna turn around and it's going to bite you one day. I try to tell y'all all the time. This is why I don't preach the dread game dumb shit. This is why I don't preach the manipulative psychology bullshit. I tell y'all all the time, y'all are not ready for what comes with a vindictive woman. You guys are not fucking ready for that. How do I do the dark game trick, King Dre? How do I manipulate and do all this shit? I'm not teaching you that, bro, because you're not ready for what comes with that. I've dealt with the evil vindictiveness from women before. Not on this level, right? But I've seen friends go through stuff like this, on this type of level. I'll get into that, you know, in a second. But y'all not ready for what comes with the evil nature of women. Remember, a woman's evilness is based on her ability to be manipulative and conniving. A man's evil is his ability to exert violence and, you know, assert his dominance over people. And to be violent. That's the evil nature of man. But the evil nature of woman, you guys have no idea how far this thing goes and how deep this shit goes. This is why I tell people, I try to teach you guys to treat people good and treat them with respect. And if you don't want to treat them with respect and treat them good, then just don't fuck with them. If you see a chick that's not up to your potential, just don't fuck with her, bro. Or, or upgrade her. Try to upgrade her, but you don't. You don't you don't treat people like that, bro. That's crazy. That's crazy. You you guys gotta I hope you guys learn from this. I hope you guys are learning from this. Now, again, this was before she sent the Facebook shit. Uh she put this on Facebook. And from here, it don't seem as though like this whole sexual assault shit. It, I don't see that in here. Like, she didn't break up with him because he sexually assaulted her. It sounded like she was fucking with somebody else. He 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 brought her down, and she's vulnerable, and she was fucking with. She found somebody better than him. That's what it's. That's what this breakup sounds like. This sounds like you make me feel so insecure to the point to where I'm I'm eating myself on the inside out. I'm eating myself from the inside out. I can't. I can't. I don't trust you because you you hurt me so bad. I don't trust you. I can't find myself to be aroused by you. I can't even kiss you. Somebody else fucking makes me feel better. And so I'm going to go try this out. Let me take some time alone to figure this out. Because that's what she basically said in the thing. Let me take some time alone to figure this out. You see what I'm saying? But she was talking in here about how great he was and, you know, all type of shit. So the whole situation weird to me. And, again, I'm not going to come on here and say you're the bitch line and all that because I don't fucking know. Her, she weird, and he fucking weird. It's fuck. Right. But what I do want to let you guys know is how not to get yourself in situations like this. And there's other things, there's other things that you guys do that's horrible to where you land yourself in situations like this. And that's what I want to prevent. I want to prevent you guys from doing dumb shit and mistreating people or doing dumb shit and putting yourself in a situation that you don't fucking have to be in because this shit is real and it will ruin your fucking life. You understand what I'm saying? Whether you did it or you didn't, you don't want that on your jacket. You don't want that on your fucking name. Now, let's get into this. Fellas, times are changing, right? 
Things are changing. Times are changing. They are beginning to draw clear lines in the sand of what's right and what's wrong. Right. And you guys, a lot of you guys aren't aware of what's right and what's wrong. So you guys thinking of sexual assault and rape is just choking a motherfucker out and taking it. It's it's just they, they are beginning to pass laws and things and draw clear lines of, you know, um, basically broadening the spectrum of what's considered sexual assault. And I don't think you guys are aware of what's going on and you need to be. So that's what I'm here to do to help you out. So you don't take advantage of people, right? Number one, you shouldn't be. First and foremost, as a man, you use your powers for good. You don't use your powers for, and I'm talking about your strength as a man. You don't use your powers for negativity. You don't use anything, your game or power for negativity. It's not because a lot going to come with that. And I just say this, what goes up comes down. And people who do stuff like that, don't it don't end good for them. So, you know, and quite frankly, if you do anything like that, you know, use your power to, 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 to you know, assault a woman or do anything of that nature, you're a buster, you're a sucker. I don't have no words for you. Fuck you. You understand? I've been cut off R. Kelly long before it was cool because I thought what he was doing was sucker shit. You understand what I'm saying? Um, and that's because the shit was on tape. Now, I, I'm not going to – allegations, cool, whatever, but what he was doing was on tape. He was doing it – the shit was on tape. A lot of you young guys don't know about that. But he had tapes floating around of him fucking little girls, R. Kelly. He still somehow beat it, but that's no, neither here nor there. But fuck you if you if, if you violate in that way. You have – you fucking with underage chicks or you, you taking shit or, or, you know, you basically sexually abusing women. Fuck you. You're, you're a cancer to society. I just want to say that first and foremost, if you do that. You understand what I'm saying? And only, who knows? Only you know what you do in the dark. It, it ain't really about ac- accusations and all of that because I don't go based on accusations. But what, if you do do that, fuck you. Don't watch me. Don't listen to me. Don't even message me. Fuck you. I don't you need your money. I don't need your views. I think, you know, let me not go off on that. But fuck you, right? So, but you guys have to understand what's going on today. (sighs) Don't, as a man, you don't use your power, your gift for negative. Remember, I say a woman's ability, a woman's gift is the ability, uh, her cunningness, her ability to be, uh, you know, underhanded and, you know, emotional and manipulative. But not, when I say manipulative, I don't mean in a bad way, but. Make things make sense socially. Get what she wants socially without the use of force. Women don't have the ability to do that, right? It's bad when they use their powers for bad instead of good. So she, instead of using her feminine powers to nurture and, you know, care for and make the world a better place, she uses it to you know, falsely accuse people of something, to cry and get people to believe her or, uh, you know, emotionally abuse her kids or whatever they do. It's bad for them, but it's bad if you use your power that you have as a man and, and you know, you use that power to, to abuse somebody else. You shouldn't do that as a man. That's number one, right? Now, fellas, you have to understand and take this from this man's situation. Again, whether he did it or he didn't, I don't fucking know. But one thing about it, you should not abuse people. You should not abuse women, not physically or emotionally. It's That's not the way to go, bro. It's not the fucking way to go. A lot of y'all, a lot of content creators have been in situations, right? And I'm not saying they assaulted anybody, but they was cursing the bitch out and you funky bitch and you fat bitch and you ain't shit. And they wonder why the bitch went to court and tried to get everything from them. That's their way of getting you back from abusing people. People ain't going to just let you. Everybody ain't going to let you abuse them. Now, just because a bitch can't fight you back physically, that's where men fuck up. They believe because a woman can't fight them back physically that they can't fight them. No, bro, the woman has the whole world on her side. And she has the power 
to cry and get everybody to believe her. A woman can cry on a dime and get everybody to believe her. There's nothing that you can do. Your, no strength can beat that. So st stay away from it. You can't fight them. Fight in your way. You can't fight them with your strength. They have strengths that you don't have, bro. A woman have the ability to cry and everybody believe her. It's science makes it that way. This is their strength. If a woman cries in front of a man, his testosterone levels drastically increase. I mean, decrease. His testosterone levels drastically dec decline. This is science when a woman cries. It, there's no amount of, you can't beat that physically. So how do you avoid that wrath? Stop mistreating people, bro, because you're not ready for that. The same way we tell women, don't get in that man's face thinking you bad because you ain't going to beat him. There's no way you can beat him. He going to fuck you up and kill you. Don't go putting your hands on a man. The same thing. Don't try to play that fucking emotional game with them, bro. You're not going to fucking win. Stay in your fucking lane. Am I saying be scared of anybody? No. Am I saying let people take advantage of you? Of course not. <clears throat> but stay in your lane and understand what you up against. Stop putting your women down. They not going to forget it, brother. Excuse me. They not going to forget it, brother. They not going to forget it. And they going to get you back. Sometimes it may not be this extreme, but they going to get you back. People don't forget how you make them feel, bro. You understand what I'm saying? Don't use your powers. Don't use your influence to do ill will to people. That's bad leadership. You understand what I'm saying? You, When you make women feel low and insecure and all of this shit, they start to build resentment, and that resentment turns to hate. They can't trust you anymore. It's anti-seductive. They can't bond with you. And eventually this is going to spark a demon that you are not ready for. Tupac said it. It's the realest shit ever. He says, hell have no fury like a woman scorn. A cemetery full of motherfuckers not knowing. Again, I ain't going to go too deep into that. But go check out the, the episode one. Episode one, uh, the evil nature of women. Fellas, don't abuse people. Don't abuse women. And if you feel like you have to abuse somebody to make you feel better, you need to go seek therapy because you're going to meet your fucking match one day. You're not going to keep mistreating people just like the bully. It's a graveyard full of tough dudes. There's a graveyard full of tough dudes, and they didn't realize that one day they was going to meet their fucking match. So you may abuse this woman. You may get over her. You may get over, you know, talking to this girl and, and, and calling her fat and ugly and shit and, and making her feel less than, you may get away with it 10 times, right? But you're going to meet your match one day. DMX said, rest in peace, DMX said, most times you make it, one time you won't. You understand what I'm saying? So just because you get away with it with this girl or you abuse this woman or you assault this woman and you get away, it's going to catch up to you, bro. It's going to catch That's just how life works. And again, it's a graveyard full of tough guys who thought that they can keep fucking with people. And the one time, there was one guy that said, you ain't fucking with me today, and smoked him. This is how this world works. Everybody ain't going to let you just be playing with them. So just treat people nice, bro. Treat people the way that you want to be treated. That's the, 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 the ultimate law to life. If you, can, if, if you can live like that and live by that, you'll be... The opportunities is endless, bro. You live a good life if you just treat people how you want to be treated. It ain't about being soft. It ain't about being a bitch. But just treat people the way that you want to be treated. If you notice, <clears throat> the only time you get on, you you hear me get up here and talk about anybody's business or talk about anything, it's related to the game and teaching. You don't hear me get up here and disrespect nobody, disrespect no content creators. I don't even get on here and complain about women's standards and you know how people be, oh, women's standards. I don't do none of that because I don't want nobody to do it to me. I don't you know, talk shit about people. I don't care about nobody. Not that I don't care, but a person's opinions is their opinions. A person's standards, that's their standards and ain't got nothing to do with me. 
And I want people to be the same way. Somebody said in one of my comments, dropped a video yesterday, and somebody said, you should, you should debate such and such coach on that. I ain't debating shit because I don't want to have to debate nobody about the way I do my shit. So I'm not going to get on here treating people bad for content, for views, for likes, for clickbait, none of that shit. Because I want to be, I don't want nobody doing it to me. Fellas, treat people the way that you want to be treated. Treat your women the way that you want to be treated, period. You understand what I'm saying? Now, let's get into this. I, I got five or six rules that I want you to go by when you're out here dealing with women and dating, right? Five rules. If you, if you, imp if you go by these, you should be okay. Now, anything can happen in the world. But a lot of the times, these guys who face stuff like this, right or wrong, whether they did it or not, put themselves in the situation. And my job is to help you avoid that. So number one, no means fucking no. No means no. Don't listen to these dumbass fucking coaches who fucking get on here and tell you, oh, when you over a woman's house and then, you know, you try to go for it and she she resists you, just chill out for a little bit and go for it again. And then, you know, maybe pull back and just go for it in and do the whole back and forth thing. Bro, that is the dumbest shit you can ever fucking do. No means fucking no. Don't listen to them dudes. Just because you get away with that shit a million fucking times, it's going to be one mother. It's one time it's going to catch you. Don't play that shit. Don't play that fucking game. If a, if a woman is at your house and you want to have sex with her, and this is all, even if, if this, let's just say this is all you want. If she's at your house and you want to have sex with her and you come on to her and she stop you, game over. It's time for you to go home, make her go home and call somebody else if that's all you want to do. If you don't see a, a, if you don't see anything, you don't want to chill with her outside of sex, then make her go home. Don't keep trying it. Kick her out and call somebody else to get what you want. Don't keep going back and forth because what you don't realize, see, a lot of y'all don't put yourselves in women's shoes because y'all not real players like y'all think y'all are. See, I'm a real player. I deal with women. I have daughter. I have a daughter. I have plenty of women in my life. I have a mother. All this shit. So I have to understand, and, 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 and me having a daughter made me, when my daughter was born, this made me want to see it things from the other side, not just my side, because I have a daughter now, right? She was born. This changed this. I don't want to get too deep into that, but I see things. I can put the shoe on the other foot when I deal with women. That's what players do. Players deal with things from all angles, and they can empathize with people, and they can see what people are coming from. See, a lot of y'all don't know that. A lot of these coaches ain't real players. They ain't. They ain't. Re they just. They not the real deal. A real ladies' man understands, right? He understands this. Women will give in because they don't want to be forced no more. Women will give up and just let you fuck them, bro, because they feel like if they keep saying no, this nigga gonna rape me. So they'll just give up. If you motherfuckers ain't learned or heard or ain't been paying attention, this is considered rape and sexual assault now. Like when I told y'all they drawing clear lines in the sand, if a woman feels like he kept coming on to me and I just gave up, right? If she feels like that, that's considered assault, right? So if a woman tells you no, it's no, because they this is how they feel, and they've always felt like this. Understand that. Y'all be coming on and coming on and coming on to a woman, coming on to a woman and coming on to her, and finally she just give up. It ain't because you finally clicked and you made her horny and your seduction worked. She just gave up. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because she don't want you to take it by force. And so she just gave up. You feel what I'm saying? No means fucking no. I don't understand how y'all want to sleep with people who don't want to sleep with you anyway. I, my dick can't even get hard like that. That's just me personally. You understand what I'm saying? Again, can't stress this enough. No means no. Don't do that back and forth shit. Hey, if she, if, if if you 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 know you chilling with her, you come on tour, right? You come on tour and she turn you down, game over. 
Or you can explain to her, hey, I don't know if you're playing or not. You know, a lot of the times women like to do the playing and the playing game, but I can't play it. If that's what you're doing, I can't play that game with you. It's too serious out here. So if we're going to, you know, I'm going to respect you, but just know I'm not finna keep, I'm not going to keep chasing after you. I'm not going to keep fucking uh, playing that game with you because it just, I can't do it. It's not, you know what I'm saying? But if they tell you, no, that's it, bro. That's it. If you want, if if you if you don't want her company, if you don't want her company, you don't want anything else but sex. Then just make her go home, bro, and call somebody else. Simple problem solved. You won't ever have to be in that situation again. Or let me not say you won't ever have to be in that situation again. But you don't have to worry about five years later some woman coming out because you done made it big, saying, "Well, he forced me to do it. I just gave up." You don't have to worry about that when you when 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 you implement the no means no shit. No means no. Uh, it was always like that with me. No means no. I ain't got time for that. And I I can't if you don't want me. I my dick can't get hard for you anyway if you don't want me. That's just me. You see what I'm saying, fellas? No means fucking no. Now the second rule, right? The second no no. You never want to shame or guilt them into sex or you like making sex mandatory. If you don't do this, if you don't fuck, then we ain't going to do this, right? Basically like throwing temper tantrums and shit because a girl don't want to fuck you or, you know, getting angry and shit. You got to understand that society views them as the weaker sex, especially physically, right? And so as ridiculous as it may sound, it's like, well, she's scared of this big angry guy, so she just gave in and she just did it because of this big angry guy. This is what they call coercion. This is for real. This is like this is classified as sexual assault. So you don't want to get into a situation like that, and not just a woman that you just meet and you got her back to your crib for the first time, but your girlfriend. If you got a, if you're in a relationship, you know what I'm saying. If you, if it's a a, a ten year relationship or whatever. This counts too, as you can see in the email. My man was with the girl for two years, and they was in a relationship, but still, what what she said he did not. I'm mean, not gonna say what he did, but what she said he did is considered coercion. They at the fucking place, right? <clears throat> they at the fucking place at, at you know, and she in public or whatever. She don't want to fuck in public. He get mad. He frustrated. So in order to you know stop the arguing and shit, she just like fuck it. You see what I'm saying? Society is going to side with her on that. You know, basically he used his power or he used his, you know, he sh- used his power or he used his, his, his aggression or, you know, his ang his, his anger to shame or guilt her into having sex. You never, ever want to do this. If a chick don't want to fuck you, then it's, hey, it is what it is. I understand you may be frustrated, especially if it's your girl or something like that. But if if she say no, then it's, it's, that's that. You know, go on about your day. Go make yourself attractive or go do what you want to do or go get you some other pussy on the side or something. But you don't want to. I don't understand how, again, I don't understand how guys can fuck uh, something that's not attracted to them. Like, I can't fuck a woman who's not into me. Like, I just can't. My dick won't even get hard. My dick won't even get hard for a woman who's like clearly don't want to do something. You see what I'm saying? I go, if I, you know, push up on a chick, whether she's my girl or not, if she don't want to do it, I ain't, I ain't, I got a headache, not tonight. Okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. If I could, if, if I could, if it's that bad, I go call somebody else. You know what I'm saying? If it's that bad, I'll turn my ass over, go jump on the game, go to sleep or go do something. But Everybody ain't going to be wanting to fuck you all the time. Everybody ain't in the mood all the time, and you have to understand that. But, you know, I said all that to say that you don't want to shame, you never shame or guilt women into having sex and or making shit mandatory or using it as a, using whatever your anger and shit as a bargaining chips. Don't get temper, throwing temper tantrums and getting mad and getting angry and, you know, being aggressive and shit because they don't want to do it and acting like a, you know, you don't want to do that, right? You never, ever want to do that. Now, the third thing, and this is a lot of a lot of you guys do this. A lot of men do this, and you better stop because it's going to catch up with you one day. Stop sleeping with sloppy drunk or high women, women who like high out of their mind. She smoke a little weed, she get a little tipsy, that's cool. But women who could clearly out of it, clearly sloppy drunk, 
how, whatever, you don't, that's out. This little young, I don't know how, I don't know how he got away with saying this, but this is weird, right? He said that the Fujiano or whatever the dude is on the song, my baby mom ain't shit, she won't let me see my son. He said something to the effect of something, we popped a Percocet or something, um, I told her to take off her panties and she couldn't even understand me. Like, stop doing that. That shit ain't cool at all. You going to catch, I'm telling you, one of these chicks going to wake up. One of these chicks going to wake up and be like, what the fuck? How did I get here? And it's a wrap for your ass. You're not supposed to sleep with people who who not conscious enough or or in their right state of mind to make the decision to to consent to this. You see what I'm saying? You're not supposed to be doing that. This is one of the another one of the things that they drawing clear lines in the sand. But you guys be so I don't know what you guys be paying attention to, but this is a thing now. If if you go and you sleep with a woman who was drunk, right, and she wake up and says, "I was out of my mind, too out of my mind to consent to this," your ass is going to jail. Straight up, as crazy as that sounds, your ass is going to jail, even if she came on to you. So stop sleeping with sloppy drunk or high women. That's something I always, I've always been against. I've never, to me, that shit just, it just wasn't, it's just like, nah, bro. Nah, I remember one time, I think I told this story on here. I think I told this story on, on one of the episodes of the, of the podcast, but I was in Miami one time. Uh, me and my homies, we was in Miami at uh, at a strip club, and we met some chicks, and the, the tricks, everybody was lit, everybody lit or whatever, uh, everybody turned up or whatever. So, you know, everybody catch their action. I catch me a little piece. It, my homies, they catch their chicks. So we all got our chicks that we met or whatever. And we heading back to the, uh, we were staying at the um, Fountain Blue in Miami. So we go back to the fountain, we go back to the hotel. Uh, we go back to the hotel. And the, the chick that I got was lit. She was super, super drunk, like sloppy drunk. Like, but she was on me. She was like pushing up on me. So I'm like, nah. Nah, I just went to sleep, bro. We went to sleep, and when she woke up the next morning, she she woke up the next morning. We woke up, we ordered some room service and shit, sitting outside, um, just like chilling. And she came out, and we talked, and she was like, you know, I want to appreciate the fact that you know, you didn't take advantage of me. And she was like, although you know I'm attracted to you and shit, and I probably wouldn't have cared, but the fact that you didn't take advantage of me, most people would have took advantage of that, and I appreciate that. And you know, that's just that's just who I am. And, and the crazy part about it, you know, one of my homies, he hit me and he was like, um, I never looked at him the same too after this. But we was talking about it. he was like, You ain't fuck old girl, cause she was fine, fine, sexy chick. He's like, You ain't fuck old girl. I'm like, nah, she was too drunk. He was like, shit, I would hit it anyway. And I just like, nah, I ain't on that. And yeah, I I always looked at him funny after that. But um and oddly enough, things happened and we ain't cool no more. But it's not because of that, but I just looked at him funny. But yeah, that situation happened with that, and and this was this was years ago. This was over ten years ago. Like I've always been this way, even when I was a teenager. If a chick get to, it's just not sexy to me. Even if I've like been in relationships with chicks and chicks I really fuck with, that you know they be get super super drunk. And I'm pretty sure they wouldn't mind like if we fucked if they super sloppy drunk and shit. It's just not a. It's just like. To be honest, when women get like that with me, it's not right. Number one, it's not right to to to, you know, take advantage of people when they like that. But to me, when women get drunk like that, it's it's a turn off. Like it turns me off. Like it's I don't I I believe that women shouldn't behave like that. Like to see chicks like that just getting fucked up and just out of their minds and shit, it's a turn off to me. Like I can't do nothing with that. You see what I'm saying? But that's a big one that y'all need to stop doing. Stop. <laughs> Stop sleeping with drunk women. It's that shit gonna bite your ass. It's just going you may get away with it ten times, but let your ass blow up. All them them ten holes will be there. That one of them feminist lawyers, they they'll figure out a way to find all them ten holes who you did that to, and it's over for your ass, Bill Cosby. You understand what I'm saying? You better ask Bill Cosby. <laughs> you feel me? Stop sleeping with women when they sloppy drunk or high out of their mind. Me, me. I don't drink or smoke anyway, and and let me challenge you. You, you want to know if you re, if you a player for real. You want to know if you a ladies man, man for real. Close the deal with no drugs or alcohol involved. All game. 
Cause I, a lot of the times when you go, when I look back and I think on it, a lot of the times, you know, you meet up with women or whatever. A lot of your, a lot of your times when you fucking and shit like this, just coming up, I realize, go have a couple drinks or have a few shots or have a few glasses of wine or take a couple shots to clear, ease the mood when you're dealing with a woman and you're on a date with a woman. So when I stopped drinking, right, when I stopped drinking and smoking a few years ago, I never smoked weed and some of my cigarettes. When I stopped drinking, when I would deal with women, it had to be all game, just like it was when I was a teenager in high school. I had to take it back to there. And t- I ain't going to lie, it felt good closing the deal naturally. They ain't drunk. They ain't tipsy. You ain't drunk. You ain't tipsy. And it's just all game. Just straight seduction. That feels good. So I challenge you guys, right, as men, as players or whatever you want to call yourself as ladies men, I challenge you from now on, try to start closing the deal. Try to start having sex with women and getting them, you know, seducing them without alcohol or drugs involved. Instead of going out for a few drinks, right, because drinks – lower the inhibitions and shit like that, go do something else and leave the drinks out of it and see if you can still close. Because King Drake could still close them. In fact, I could close them better now than I did when I used to drink and shit like that. And that's on everything. I love humble brag, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, you know, again, that's a challenge to you guys. Try to do that without that. And that's – you're going to really – you when you do that, you're going to really – you know, develop your game. You see what I'm saying? That makes your game that much stronger. So that's that. Now, another no-no, Bill Cosby. (laughs) Stop providing women drugs and alcohol. Goes back to the, the other shit. If a chick come to your crib or if you go out with a chick or whatever, it's one thing to buy a chick a drink and shit. But a lot of these chicks be like, hey, you know where I can get some pills. Y'all go back to the crib and she want to pop a pill or she want to get high or she want to get drunk. And then she hits you and say, hey, you know where I can get some Percocet. You know where I can get an ecstasy. You know where I can get a Xanax. Yeah, you a guy. You got connections, so you hook it up. What happens 10 years later? He drugged me. He drugged me. He gave me drugs. As ridiculous as they seem, society views women as the weaker sex. As ridiculous as this, as this sounds, they view them as the weaker sex. We all do. And so it's like, how dare he drug her? You know, she wanted to get high. And so he got it for her, but he drugged her. She just couldn't control herself. So he was the one who drugged her. I, I don't know Bill Cosby's situation, but I doubt, right? And some of the women came out and said that they was lying, right? But I doubt that he was, with a man of his stature, that he was slipping something in a bitch drink while they weren't looking. Do men do that? There are men who do shit like that. That happened to, funny story, that happened to a girl that I know and her boyfriend. The dude, (laughs) I was dating this girl, and a dude put something in her drink at the bar, and her and the boyfriend, the dude didn't know that she was, (laughs) the dude didn't know that she was there with another dude, and they both drunk, and they both was out of there, but um, so I'm not saying that there aren't guys who do stuff like that, but I'm talking about Bill Cosby's case. With his, I doubt that he was slipping shit in the bitch drink when they were looking. What happens is what usually happens. Hey, I want Quaaludes. Hey, can you get me this? Hey, can you get me that? Right. And so they get high out of their mind. They have sex. Hey, I didn't consent to this. You drugged me. I was out of my mind. This is especially since Bill Cosby. And you know what? They 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 are making it in a lot of places to where there's no statute of limitations on shit like this. Bill Cosby, thank you, thanks to Bill Cosby's case. So be mindful of what you get for woman. Woman wanna she come to your crib and she say, Hey, can you get me some pills? Tell us she gotta get her own shit. And if she you shouldn't be fucking with no junkie anyway, bro. I just say that. You shouldn't be fucking with no junkies anyway. Weed included. Weed included. If you smoke a little, I ain't going to say that because weed ain't, it's considered legal, right? But you shouldn't be fucking with junkies. Anyway, but if you do, make them get their own shit, bro. Because if something happened, you drugged him. 
Even if they wanted it, even if they have a history of being getting high and all that shit, even if they junkies, if you get it for them, you drug them if something happened. When the, in the courts, in the papers, whatever, you drug them. You got them drunk. Not they are responsible adult and nobody put a gun to their head and make them pop a Percocet or make them pop a pill or make them pop a Xanax or, or put a gun to their head and make them drink till they get drunk. Not lot, not what really happened, but it's going to be you drug this person. This is the way it is. Look at Bill Cosby. So stop providing women drugs and alcohol if you don't want this to happen to you. Make them get their own shit. Now, again, they go back to the crib. If you got wine and shit, that's 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 a fine line, right? Wine and drinking shit. Don't give them a lot. Or make them pour their own shit or whatever you're going to do. But don't be getting a woman drunk and just giving her, just getting her drunk and making her take shots. Or not making her because you can't make her do shit. But, you know, let her drink till she takes shots. Be responsible. Be the man in the situation and say, okay, you've had enough. Or after two, there ain't no more after two because I don't want it to get, I don't need you to be, you know, out of there. I need you to be coherent with me. If you if you are, if you ain't coherent, then this ain't, it ain't no fun. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to be babysitting you. So you be the man, you know, you be the man and you be the leaner, leader and you don't let them get there. You understand? You control that. So, again, the alcohol is iffy. I'm not going to say don't have alcohol back to your, at your crib. Don't pour a gla- don't, you know, bond over a glass of wine and don't pour them wine or a couple shots or whatever. But you control that and you make sure you control him what she did. And if she want more, you make her go get it herself. Because remember, he got me drunk. Not I wanted to get drunk and I couldn't control myself. He got me drunk. It's his fault. He drugged me. But, hey. That's the penalties of leadership. Go look at that episode. But, yeah, stop providing women drugs and alcohol. Make them provide their own shit. Now, another thing you don't want to do, right, and a lot of guys who have who are in positions of power get caught up like this. You never use your power or influence, right, as an exchange for a woman for sex, meaning you don't want to – Let's say Harvey Weinstein or uh, Mr. Manager at the job or, you know, um, Hollywood movie producer or Hollywood record, uh, uh, music label executive. Don't use your power to say, hey, I can get you this if you sleep with me or if you get me a blowjob. That's a crime, bro. You can go to jail for that. Because, again, women look at it like, well, what else does she wants to do? She has to feed her not women's society, look at it like, what else is she supposed to do? She has, as ridiculous as it sounds, what else is she supposed to do? She has to feed her family. She has to get somewhere in life. So, you know, she got to suck his dick and he used his influence over her. So you don't want to do that. Don't use your power and influence to get sexual favors in exchange for favors. You never want to do that, right? Offering elevation in the company or whatever. And men who have their own business, let me tell you this right now. Men who have your own business, do not shit where you eat at. You do not mix business with pleasure. Stop fucking your employees. That's the worst thing you can fucking do because of this. You understand? All a woman got to say is, well, he promised me a promotion. Or he said, if you know, if I, if, if I, if I sleep with him, he's not going to fire me for being late. So what else am I supposed to do? I need my job. So I got to feed my kids. Do not fuck the women who work for you. That's a no, no. You guys need to learn how to fucking discipline yourselves. Don't fucking do it. Them little young hot chicks that y'all be hiring and shit, fucking them and shit like this. This is what, this is when you be seeing these dudes, these Hollywood dudes and these dudes who be getting caught up at these fucking companies and shit like this. This is what be, this is what be going on. Stop shitting where you work. Stop shitting where you eat that, bro. Don't shit where you eat. You do not mix business with pleasure. That's the first rule. That's one of the first rules. You don't mix business with pleasure ever. And this is what happens, right? Offering them, you know, elevation in the company or promising them a, promising them a job or promising them a, a, a record label in, in exchange for sexual favors or promising them, you know, this or par- promising them favor or letting them slide up. You know, I ain't going to let you, you know, I ain't going to fire you. I ain't going to tell the boss this or 
if you just fuck me or give me a blowjob, everything will be cool. I keep this, you know, I keep this under wraps. Uh, college professors, you know, I let you slide on that grade if you just hook me up. Don't do that. That's called sexual assault, bro. See what I'm saying? That's considered rape today. It should have always been, but now that's considered rape. And a lot of you guys may not know that. Landlords who let women slide for getting them, giving them pussy. I know a dude, <laughs> I know a dude who was in the real estate, in the real estate game here that kind of got caught up for doing shit like that. An older guy. You see what I'm saying? He was letting all them hoes slide on the rent. He was letting all them hoes slide on the rent. He was fucking all the hoes that stayed in his apartment complex. I almost said his name and slipped and said his name, but don't fucking do that, landlords. You see what I'm saying? All my guys out there in the real estate game, don't use your power and influence to get sexual, you know, to barter sexual favors in exchange for them for elevation or whatever. Don't do it. That's bad. You're going to get caught up. You may get away with it. You may get away with that shit a million times, but at one time you ain't going to get away with it. You understand what I'm saying? Don't shit where you eat at. It's a million women on the planet besides the woman who, who work with you or that young has a million women on the, not a million, a billion, seven billion at that. And it's millions in whatever country you at. There's women all around you. Don't get caught up like that. Don't fucking do it. Now, this is the last thing I'm going to say, right? Do not, and this I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to say this anyway, especially for my younger guys. Do not fuck with underage women. If the age limit is 18, it's fucking 18. Fellas, young men, I know it's hard, right? I know you just turned 18, and I know that young 15-year-old is on you, and she look up to you, and she just want to do it to you. That young 16, and you think like two day, two years, that ain't big of, that ain't that much, you know, that ain't that big of a difference, right? It is, according to the law. Don't get caught up like that. I know a dude I went to school with. I be about to say dudes names and shit. Know a dude I went to school with. 10 years in prison. He was 19. She was 16. The mama found out. Or 18 or 15 or something like that. It was a three year difference. He did 10 years for that. The mom found out and he got to go. He just now, I don't say just now, but. This happened when we was probably 20 or 21 years old. He got out when he was 30, 31. Did 10 years. Well, 85% of that. So about eight and a half years. He got a 10-year sentence. But you, you, you don't, if you 18, if you 18, I know it's hard. I know that that 15, 16-year-old is easy because she on you, because she look up to you, because she dating up. I know it's easy. I know it's hard when you 18 to date an 18-year-old, to date a 19-year-old, to date a 20. You got to wait it out. It's the game. We all had to do it. 18, to, I swear, 18 to 20 is the worst age to be for a man. Because if you fuck with the women, who, the girls who really want you, you're committing a crime. The chicks your age don't want you because they fucking the two, they, they chasing the 23, 24-year-olds. And the older women definitely don't want you because you don't got nothing to offer them. So I know it's hard. Ride it out. You see what I'm saying? Don't fall. Don't go back fucking with them, them 15 and 16-year-olds because that, that can catch up to you. You see what I'm saying? That can hit you. Because with her girl, her, I mean, not her girl, but, you know, her parents or some shit find out. Her parents and shit find out. Or, you know, her mom or something, and they want to press charges, it's over for you, bro. It ain't nothing you can do. That statutory rape. You feel me? R. Kelly. That's that R. Kelly thing. And as you can see, they putting your ass away behind that. They hanging him. He finna hang him. You see what I'm saying? Don't get, don't get caught up in no statutory rape. Now, I shouldn't have to be, if you in your 20s, right? If you in your 20s, I shouldn't have to be saying this to you if you in your 20s. Ain't no way you in your 20s and dating no chick under 18. And if you are, turn me off, don't follow me no more. You see what I'm saying? But I can understand as an 18-year-old, as, as an 18, 19-year-old, I can understand that. Because it be chicks you went to school with. Shit, if you, you know, you in the, you in the, you in the 10th grade, I mean, you in the you in the, the school day, the high school. They start so like you in the eleventh grade. You a junior, she a freshman, right? And then you grow, you graduate in two years. She's still a minor, so I can kind of understand that. But once you get a certain age, it's over. 
You got to let that go. Let them be in high school. You know, you be dealing with a chick. You a junior. She a freshman. That's legal. Everything cool. You know, you 16 or 17. She 15 or however old she is, 14 or whatever. Y'all teenagers, everything cool. But if, when you turn 18 and you graduate and she's still in high school, what else you going to do? It's like, okay, we, you know, so I understand that. But the law don't see it like that, my brother. And you can get caught up. You see what I'm saying? And, and a lot of guys get caught up like that. So stick it out. You ain't going to be 18 forever. And you're going to get the last lap too. When you get 23, 24, them 18, 19 year old chicks, they're going to be, they're going to be chasing you too. You see what I'm saying? So don't statutory rape is a real thing. And you can get a lot of time for that. You can get a lot of time for statutory rape. I don't think y'all realize how much, <laughs> how many dudes I know that have been to prison for shit like that. Like real to like five, 10, 15 years for shit like that. Don't play around with that. My young guys, my older guys, I shouldn't even have to be saying that to you. But I think that's it on that. I will say another thing, right, before I get out of here real quick. Keep your receipts. Record text messages, all type of shit. Keep your receipts. Keep your receipts, fellas. You understand what I'm saying? Keep your receipts. And don't mistreat people. Just don't mistreat people. Treat people how you want to be treated. That's the bulk of this whole thing. Treat people how you want to be treated. You don't want nobody to take advantage of you. You see what I'm saying? You don't want nobody taking advantage of you when you sleepy or when you sloppy and drunk. You see what I'm saying? You don't want nobody drugging you and getting you high. You see what I'm saying? You don't want nobody forcing themselves on you. Just treat people how you want to be treated. You don't want no woman using her influence over you to get you to do something for her at a job. You scared you're going to lose your job and you got to feed your kids or you got child support or something. And this old bitch coercing you to do favors for her that you don't want to do, but you scared you're going to lose your job. Think about the shoe or put the shoe on the other foot and treat people the way that you want to be treated. You see what I'm saying? Maybe I'll do another show on, maybe I'll do another show on how to spot, because cause false allegations of, on sexual assault happen. So maybe we'll do, maybe next week we'll do how to spot women who not right in the head. I, I'll teach you how to spot women who not right in the head so you can avoid the false shit. But this is for the guys who make bad decisions and your bad decisions get you there, put you in a spot that you shouldn't be in or that you don't want to be in to where your life is ruined, whether you did it or not. You see what I'm saying? And if you did it, you shouldn't have did it. Fuck you. Don't, I'm about to go on a whole nother rant. But anyway, I am your gracious, gracious game advisor. Yours truly, King Drake. Fellas, go visit Ultimate Ladies Man right now. UltimateLadiesMan.com right now. Put yourself on the wait list. April 4th, we're going to open enrollment. This is going to be huge. Three courses that's valued at thousands of dollars. Three courses. You get three courses. Attraction 101, which teaches you how to be attractive. Uh, the Ultimate Ladies Man Dating Guide, guide which teaches you how to date effectively and, you know, from approaching all the way to closing the deal correctly and how to make a woman fall in love with you. There's nothing out on the market like this. Trust me, right? There's nothing on the market like this. You are, Not only do you get those three courses, you get five intense training webinars with some of the best coaches in the game teaching you the game. From all aspects of life. That's for a week straight. You're going to get five training webinars. Um, you know, five training sessions via Zoom. You also get monthly private Zoom sessions with, you know, none other than, none other than your gracious game advisor. And you get the private Telegram chat access to me and other guys like me. So you can help you out with whatever you need right there at that moment. And that's what the Zoom sessions will be too. The monthly Zoom sessions. If you have questions, basically maintenance and, you know, giving you game. This is you cannot beat this. You only gonna have five days to enroll from April fourth to April eighth. You want to get on the wait list right now because once you get on the wait list, you'll have to access before everybody else. This is how I communicate with people through email when everything is live and shit like that. So get on the wait list right now at ultimateladiesman.com. You do not want to miss this. It's coming up April fourth. It's going down. But anyway, this is none other than your gracious, gracious game advisor. Yours truly, King Dre. Fellas, treat people how you want to be treated. In today's social media age, the dating game has become ruthless and competitive. 
with the technological advances we've made in society being the main culprit. Social media and dating apps have leveled the playing field so that now women have the power, the power of choice and options. But where does that leave you? Frustrated, disappointed, lonely, left on scene, canceled dates, ghosting. Let's just be friends and I need to get to know you more. Rejections. I know it seems like you're on a dark, dead end road, but that changes right now. I have the solution for you. I have the keys to transform you into the ultimate ladies man that women can't resist. Yes, you too can be amongst the 5% of men who know this game. This system will teach you the entire seduction process from the initial approach all the way to escalate into sex. Learn step by step how to transform yourself into the attractive man that the modern woman finds irresistible. Gain valuable skills such as screening, texting, flake prevention, sexual escalation, and so much more. Are you ready to start winning? Are you ready to become the ultimate ladies man?